Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Quarantine Talk. Uh, today we are indoors again, and we're going to take an email question today from Spencer, uh, who writes, Hi, Andreas. Firstly, I wanted to thank you for publishing such informative videos detailing your development of Serenity. I had wanted to develop an operating system since back in high school, and even gave it a few ill-fated attempts. But your videos and general philosophy that anything can be built incrementally really motivated me to give OS development another try. In fact, I got my kernel to load and execute its first program last night. Thank you so much for demystifying the OS development process. So that brings me to the other reason I'm writing to you. Do you have any advice for how one should develop their own programming style? Because, because I watch your videos and occasionally reference the Serenity source, I realize I've subconsciously adopted some of the naming conventions and design patterns in Serenity. For example, separating out non-kernel specific subsystems into their own libx folders. Uh, is this a problem you've ever dealt with? Thank you so much, Spencer. So thank you very much, Spencer, for, for writing into the show. Uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, this, this is a very good question. So, uh, but first, let me just say I'm, I'm really thrilled to hear that you are making progress on your OS project. That's really great, because I know how uh, demotivating it can be early on when you're just not making progress as fast as you would like. And um, the fact that you were able to find the energy needed to sort of persist through that uh, roadblock is, is really, really great. So um, I'm really happy to hear that you're making progress. And demystification is what this channel is all about. So I'm happy that it's working. So thank you for, for saying that, because I'm, I'm really, really glad to hear it. Uh, anyway, so about your question, uh, when it comes to developing your own programming style, um, I think that's something that every programmer does um, as they grow and as we, as we age and we do more programming, right? As long as you're programming, then your personal style is always developing. And it's definitely a lifelong thing. Um, but I, I guess I do have some tips. So something that has worked really well for me is um, making sure I take in a lot of external uh, impressions. So I've done that by working on many uh, large open source projects with very many other people and um, trying to absorb and immerse myself as much as possible in the programming styles of those projects. So uh, my main projects that I worked on outside of Serenity have been uh, KDE, Qt, and WebKit. And um, each of those projects, they have their own sort of distinct style. Although there's also a, a, like an interesting amount of overlap between those three particular projects because of their, um, they have sort of a shared legacy and a shared history that is, a, is very hard to explain uh, simply, but... Um, it's, I think it's, it's been really, really good for me to, um, to work on these huge projects with so many people because when you do that, then you are both consciously and subconsciously exposing yourself to a ton of programming patterns and styles and, and um, just little idiosyncrasies that, that other people have figured out over, um, like sometimes over like a decades of, of programming that like, oh, it works really well if I do this. And then you accidentally stumble, on, stumble upon some person's code that does something really clever and even though you might not understand immediately when you look at it that it's doing something clever, you're still taking that cleverness in. And I think that sort of thing is really, really neat. And actually, you mentioned here that you have subconsciously adopted some of the naming conventions and design patterns from Serenity in your own code. Um, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, that uh, you want to take in impressions, uh, whether it's by reading uh, code from other projects or participating in other projects. Uh, I think both of those work. Um, and if you're able to, to absorb some of these serenity patterns just by, um, just by seeing me using them or, um, seeing them in the code base, that's a really, really uh, great example, I think, of this. And, um, all throughout the years, as I've been working on these big projects with other people, I also had smaller projects going on by myself. Now, I didn't spend as much time on my small projects in the past as I would have liked, um, but... It was always very important to have a playground where uh, I could try out things for myself without disturbing others. And that's something that I, I advocate that it's really good to participate in open source and participate with other people to get all those different impressions and stuff. But you really, really need to have your own playground 
uh, area where you can experiment and you can uh, you can do very pointless refactoring and like micro optimizations and you can waste your time on stuff you just think is interesting but has you know dubious value uh, you need that space because that's where you play and discover what works what does not and you want to do that you know by yourself <laughs> where it doesn't break stuff for other people so i think that's that's really really good to have and another thing is that it's good if um now, I, I don't know how old you are or how long you've been doing this, but I think um, over time, it's it's really good if you can sort of um, codify what it is that your style is about. And um, one thing that, like, one thing that we should all really get out of the way is uh, white space and, and, like, this low-level formatting uh, stuff. And uh, nowadays, there's, like, um, this Clang format tool, for example, which we use in Serenity, which just auto-formats the white space so that... Everyone, before you before you push a commit to Serenity, um, then you we just I just ask that you use Clang formats so that all the white space is consistent, and that's just one of those things where if we just stick to something consistent, then we don't have to think about it. And I think that's really valuable because then you can start to worry about sort of higher level stylistic concepts instead, uh, because. It's just so silly, you know, when you when you're sitting in, in patch review and you have to sit there and like argue about um, curly brace placement or parentheses, um, whatever. Um, just get rid of all that by using automatic formatting and graduate to higher level stuff. And um, for instance, you mentioned naming conventions. So in Serenity, uh, I I've taken from the WebKit project and from the Qt, and I guess from KDE as well, really. Uh, all of them, they sort of have this um, very expressive, write in English, um, verbose names, like they're not afraid to have long identifier names, long function names. And, and I think that's really, really valuable because, um, you know, you write the code once, but you're going to read it hundreds of times uh, if it's uh, any good, because then it'll stick around and, and um, you won't regret spending a few extra seconds coming up with a long name um, that makes it easier to read and understand the code in the future and especially if you're working together with others because then they have a chance of understanding the code much faster as well so um, when I said like it's really good to codify what it is that you're trying to do and what I mean by that is for instance here in the Serenity project we have the contributing uh, contribution policy or whatever and um, where I try to write down, like, please do these things, please don't do these things. Um, and the, um, the most important things I think here are um, this one, write an idiomatic Serenity C++. So uh, I ask everyone who works on the project to write in the idiomatic C++ style of a project. And if you are a, you know, a competent C++ developer, you'll, you'll understand the style as you work on the project and you'll sort of take it in and um, learn how to use it and this is if, if you don't know how to do this when you start you'll learn it as you go because you just try to write code that fits in if that makes sense uh, that's a very good skill and I think it's absolutely necessary when you when you have ambitions to to write something large and that needs to be worked on by many people you really want to uh, settle on what is idiomatic project um, what is the idiomatic project language and likewise here uh, choose expressive variable functions and class names. Make it as obvious as possible what the code is doing. And this is also really important, and I already mentioned it, but um, I really, really believe that you can save so much time and effort if you express yourself extremely clearly and you're not afraid to be, uh, you know, verbose and precise with um, identifiers. And of course, uh, it's it's always I think it's always better to be um, expressive than it is to be clever uh, and um, but but like this this isn't really this question the question was not about what is my programming style it was more about like how to develop your own style so I'm I'm actually I'm just gonna um, stop talking about what my style is and, and talk about uh, the meta game I guess of programming style so. Um, the important thing is to expose yourself to different programming styles because then you can pick and choose what you like. If you limit yourself to working by yourself 
or only in small teams, then you will have a much, much um, smaller data set to, to uh, pick, up and pick and choose from, right? And you want to you wanna have a big data set. Um, and then I think it's, it's important to stick to it. And very often, if I, wanna, if I find some new pattern of code that I think, oh, this is pretty neat, uh, I'd like to, uh, I, maybe I would like to use that for myself then I very often um, just set aside some time to write out some new class or some new piece of code or something in that style just to see how I feel while typing it, while typing that way. Because at first, uh, I've, I've realized over the years that at, at the first, whenever I try to adopt some new style of doing things, it always feels wrong at first. And I need to spend, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes writing in a certain style before I know if I like it or not. So... That's why, again, it's good to have those playground projects where you can you can do little things like that, and um, and it, it doesn't feel like wasted time. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of running all over the place here, but but really, uh, I guess my advice is to work on stuff with other people, ex read code, expose yourself to a lot of different things, have a place to experiment and in your own project where you are the king, queen, and uh, all of the above and below. And um, likewise, try to figure out what your style really is and try to write it down. Uh, write a white space, um, use something like client format to organize your white space and set up, like I have in my text editor that I use, in Q Creator, I have a key combination. I press Alt Shift F and it auto formats the current file. Set something like that up, auto format your stuff, never think about it again. Just because um, over time when I've been using that, I just learned how to format it the way the formatter would do it anyway. Um, and then um, try to figure out what are your sort of rules and see if you can write them down. Like wh what are your patterns? Uh, can you articulate them? Uh, and it's okay if you can't, but um, uh, as you, as you work on your code, try to stick to your own patterns. Um, try to st stick to your own style and, and see how it develops. Um, anyway, <laughs> I like the question, but I, I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit like um, hazy on how to answer it because it's uh, maybe I'm not super exactly sure how I think about this, but I, I appreciate the chance to think out loud about it. And I hope that you will find your style as well. And everybody is obviously welcome to adopt the Serenity uh, style and or at least pick and, and choose the things you like from it and pick and choose the things you like from other places that that I think is the best for everybody. Uh, anyway, thank you, Spencer, for writing in with this really nice question and um, big, uh, big good luck with um, continuing on your OS project. Um, that's really sweet. So... I guess that's it for today's video. So thanks everybody for hanging out with me here at the computer. Um, things are progressing slowly, but slowly <laughs> here in Sweden. Um, and um, I'm feeling a little bit more positive than last week. I guess I'm adjusting a little bit to the circumstances, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, it is, I, I do feel very fortunate to be able to work from home and, uh, I think uh, those of us that do, we, we should be very grateful. Um, and, uh, yeah, cause it's weird out there and I hope everybody is doing what they can to stay safe and stay sane during these times and I hope you take care of yourself and I'm doing my best and we'll see how it goes. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye.